deliver a message and tell when this unbeaching is about to begin. And 3D glasses seems to be the only way seems to be the only way of working. I guess it's from a movie called They Live Hard. Oh, I don't know, some kind of reference. I guess it's my gimmick. But this is the only type of weapon you can use against them. You have to wear these. If you are out there, you are this last hope for humanity. Oh my guy. Well, I better be ready. Twilight Wicked on part two. I'm trying for you. Solutions will be on the 20th of November next week. I've put it in my copy on Xbox 360 and I cannot wait. I am pumped for that game. I really, really want to play it and I really want to share my experience and what couple of levels and can kind of give a, a review on it and kind of thoughts and opinions. So, so excited. So, before I uh, play Hitman Absolution next week, I think I will review the 2007 Hitman movie. I'm talking about the story, I'm talking about the character, the genre, any kinds of things important to mention when I'm talking about uh, this film. So, let's talk about Hitman. Son of the Hitman follows Agent 47, played by Tim Fjolden, who is a highly trained assassin working for a worldwide organization called the Agency, and he's been given specific kind of uh, contract kills uh, all around the world. He has to kill specific clients in very specific ways, in terms of explosions, maybe fake deaths, uh, it could be snipering, all that type of stuff. And he begins a certain type of contract within Russia. He has to kill the Russian president. And he finds out that after uh, doing his deal, he's been double-crossed. And he has to go in a very personal, uh, kind of high life and death stake to find out why he's been double-crossed by the agency. And uh, find out this kind of uh, cover-up by the Russian government. And that's the kind of basic plot point uh, with Hitman without really giving getting anything away in a sense. Uh, so yeah, that's the kind of basic kind of plot point story. It's also the thing of the story though. Being that it's based upon a video game, it's gone from a kind of, you know, video game to kind of movie script format style, I actually think it's actually a pretty decent movie. And I think it's definitely one of the better uh, kind of video game adaption movies out there. Uh, there's much, much worse ones, including Silent Hill Revelation, which is just, just awful. Continuation of elements from the game, number three. Continuation of the story from movie number one, and elements that I've created myself. storyline, I actually quite like it. Um, now, I'm quite a big fan of the actual Hitman game series, I've played all the actual Hitman games, and I think they did their best to try and stay true to what the Hitman, you know, Hitman series was, and try and form that into an actual movie to the cinemas, and, you know, I actually really, really enjoyed it, I had a good time with it, there was a couple of good jokes, cool references to the actual games, um, I think Timmy Fjolden was a fantastic choice as Agent 47, the original choice was uh, Vin Diesel, that was a no, no, no kind of thing. The Agent 47, you know, within the beginning of the movie kind of thing, doing ordinary kind of contracts and, uh, you know, he's taking over people around the world in a sense. And we kind of get that kind of, you know, something's already happened for that style because you see Agent 47 at this kind of office, uh, you know, this kind of police officer's house. Uh, the actual police officer's name is Drew Scott and um, he's kind of questioning him. He's like, you know, when does a good man decide when to kill kind of thing? And he's kind of interrogating him in a sense. And it kind of goes like flash through a path into the kind of you know so many weeks later kind of thing and we kind of get the idea of like who he is this character and how good of a professional or how an assassin he is and uh, so we kind of get that kind of foreground of his character and people that play the games they know exactly what type of person he is and you know and I like the actual scenes building up you know to the actual kind of double cost in a sense and yeah he's very good at what he does and I do like the fact that he's just stayed true to the games in, in some respect. I know they changed a lot of the aspects um, from the actual game into this movie. The actual main storyline itself as an actual thriller, I think actually is pretty decent. You know, it's it's a Russian conspiracy, too much away. 
Um, Agent 47 is, you know, obviously contracted to kill the Russian president. He shoots him in the head, Stone Clean walks away, and basically the next day he's on TV, he's alive and well. What the heck has just happened kind of thing. And we basically have to go on this journey uh, to find out, you know, what this kind of, what's happened, you know, he killed him. You know, someone doesn't shove a bullet wound to the head kind of thing, so what's going on in a sense. And the agency, I think, I think double crossed him, and I like the conversations between him and Diana. Yeah, we get, we get that kind of. Um, anyone who's played the actual games, we know that Diana's got a voice for the actual, you know, laptop computer, and you know, the conversations are really well done. It's like, if you double cross me, I will find that place and I will burn it to the ground. I, I love his kind of reactions. I love him getting angry and stuff, and I love how he's prepared everything for escape route. He's put C4 on the door. He's got a rope on the actual window way to escape. I like his, he's put like you know five steps ahead of everyone. I like the action scenes. I like the storyline. I think um, it's really good for you know for Hitman's story. My only problem with this, um, it is quite restricted, massively. Now this is generally because of 20th Century Fox studio interference, massive studio interference into this project. He basically, well, basically they the the inequities basically said like, okay, we, we see here's the footage. Mm, we don't like it. We're gonna basically gonna reshoot everything you've done. Basically, they hated the director's style. They they hated his kind of vision of Hitman. So they basically chopped it down into a basically a 12 certificate version on the cinemas. Refilmed a lot of his stuff. Uh, toned the violence down massively, and that's why. Um, the film didn't do very well, the cinemas to be perfectly honest. The uh, actual extended version on uh, DVD and Blu-ray is the, probably the hardest uh, edition you're going to get of the actual movie. It's actually quite better in, in a lot of respect in terms of violence, in terms of extended scenes and all that type of stuff. But um, as an actual storyline, it's not too bad. I, I like the idea of him being on the run type of stuff. I like um, he's been double-crossed and he has to try and, you know... Um, uh, try and find out what's happened with this conspiracy and I like he he is agent 47 and that's what I like about it um, one of the things I don't like about it though is it could have been the storyline for it could have been something more of a sequel really I mean I would have liked to have seen just agent 47 just find out who he is as an actual person in a sense and just him taking out clients around the world you know different environments different locations that can be really really cool but what this movie does really, really well is give Agent 47 a bit more of a character, you know, give him a bit more of a personality, give him a bit more of a style. He's not just a kind of a stone-cold killer, assassin, that just kills, like, that kind of thing. You know, there is situations where, like, one scene where he's, he's having a drink and basically a, a woman is flirting with him, he's, you know, charming him in a sense, you know, and he doesn't know how to react to it, he doesn't know how to see that, you know, he just walks away, you know, he goes, excuse me. Because he, he doesn't date, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't understand, you know, he's, he's been raised in a very certain way. And, you know, uh, when he comes across a uh, chick from uh, Quantum of Solace, which I don't know her name, pictures up here somewhere, <laughs> uh, you know, he, he gives him a bit more of a different, you know, approach to life and a bit more approach to people in a sense, you know, because he has to protect this girl. This girl, um, you know, was basically enslaved. Uh, to this Russian presence, then it's you know a really nasty one. She was tortured, she was abused, and that type of stuff. And he kind of feels something for her in a sense, but he doesn't know what to do. And he kind of taunts her now and again, kind of thing. I'll put you in the, I'll put you in the booty. Don't shut the heck up, kind of thing. And through that kind of you know relationship, that kind of love hate relationship in a sense, they kind of understand each other a bit more. We understand um, Agent Forty Seven, who he is and who his background is in a sense. As an actual storyline, I think it's actually pretty good. Um, it's definitely enjoyable. It's definitely interesting. I, I like the ending myself. I like the uh, twists and stuff. Um, I liked how it ended. I like uh, where the characters went. I like the dialogue. Um, I thought it was very well done. The scripting. Um, for me, anyway, I thought it was really well done. My only problem is it is restricted. That's the only problem with it. You know, it could have been so much more. If thinking about it, to be completely honest. Now, one of the main things um, I think I'm a couple of faults about this. One, it is restricted, of course, like I just said, and they did change a major plot point, which I suppose they could fix within the sequel. Now, they suggested within this movie that um, in the actual game series. Um, he is a genetically engineered clone. He is, you know, he's the perfect assassin. He is the ultimate assassin kind of thing. And uh, we follow that for each game and who he is and how he kind of, you know, realizes that. And he goes after certain people and he is the best of the best. What this movie suggests that he was raised as an orphan, you know, as a very young kid. He was raised in combat, he was raised in knives and weaponry and stuff. And he's become an assassin basically from birth in a sense. 
So basically this kind of, you know, government, this kind of off-branch network is basically just taking orphans and training them into weapons and he's Agent 47. And we see other agents out there also where uh, uh, when he gets double-crossed and he has to try and hide, there's other agents, you know, trying to track him down and find him. And uh, what would have been different is that um, because he's a clone and stuff within the games, uh, you know, we never actually saw like, another duplicate version of him, it's just other people chasing him down type stuff. That's my only kind of major play, but to be perfectly honest, they could still resolve that, I suppose, within the sequel. They, well, they could change that still, they could lie to him or something, they could, he could find out the truth or something. So overall, I think the storyline actually is pretty decent. I think for an actual video game to movie-based uh, adaption, it's pretty good. It's got some good twists, a lot of great action scenes. You know, Agent 47 is really, really cool to have him on the main screen. Uh, we get some really fantastic angle shots, um, especially that kind of classic shot with him just in the back. Uh, kind of real, you know, uh, for kind of third person view of him with the, uh, the actual barcode in the back of his head. It was directed by Xavier Jens, who's also done The Divide and uh, Frontiers. Two really fantastic movies which I want to get in my collection for absolute sure. And this was his first uh, feature American film. He, from an actual guy who comes from like a, a music video director to a feature film, and he took on this as his first project. I think he did a fantastic job. Now, he's not the best director ever. I think his direction work has come a lot more better within these course of the divide and the frontiers. I think that was his best work. I think he did a really great job, perfectly honest. Again, 20th Century Fox are complete dicks to him. They were basically saying, you can't do this. They were reshooting everything around him. They were, they were you know, dissing his work completely. They didn't like what he was doing, his approach. And he's done two of the best movies since then, you know, uh, in France. And I uh, another low budget American movie, which to be perfectly honest, he's a really gifted director. And he's also doing the ABCs of Death for short film, which is absolutely fantastic. What I liked about him is direction work in this one. He looked, he appreciated the fans, you know, much like the first Silent Hill movie. He actually listened to fans what they wanted to hear, and he actually did a full on. Um, R-rated version of Hitman, you know, and uh, within the actual DVD there is the lead scenes which they actually show a lot more violence, a lot more kind of squibs and you know blood packs and stuff. He wanted an R-rated version of this movie, and he knew what fans liked. He's a fan of the game series, that's why they picked the director. He's a natural director, and him and Tim Film worked really well bantering back and forth. And I think his angle shots, I think the way he kind of. Uh, did the scenes are really well done. Uh, you can definitely tell what was his shots and what you know what was uh, refilmed by someone else. So you know, I would say don't blame the director, don't blame the writer, blame Twenty Century Fox. But this is the cast of him, and we have uh, Timmy Feld playing Agent Forty Seven, of course. Timmy Feld is one of my favourite actors. Uh, I think I've established that within my reviews now. Um, he is really, really gifted, and I really appreciate his take upon Agent Forty Seven. He took this kind of you know stone blow to call killer. Uh, from the actual, you know, Hitman games, and turn them into a bit more of a uh, three-dimensional, a bit more of a humanised version of his character. Um, but he brought something so much, uh, you know, depth to his character, which I really appreciate. I really, really like, especially being a fan of the Hitman games. One of the things I didn't like about the Hitman games myself personally was the fact that they just didn't really, I didn't really connect to this character, which was kind of the point, I suppose. But within a feature movie, you, if you having a main character like this, you know, like Agent 47, you need to have him humanised. I think put him in situations uh, throughout the entire movie, you know, sense of action scenes in terms of him having this carry around this basically this female character is very interesting. The dialogue back and forth is very, very well uh, delivered, I think, and very well executed. Uh, so I think Timmy Fong did a really fantastic job. So in this movie, we have Doug Scott plays the um, a police officer in this movie, the actual detective tracking uh, Agent 47's character down. And he's actually a pretty decent actor also. He's been in a couple of other projects, uh, kind of various TV shows and other movies, and I like his character, and I like how he kind of uh, approaches certain things. You know, he really wants to get this guy, and he really wants to stop him. And there's certain moments within which he kind of teams up with him a little bit and says, wait a minute, Agent 47's right, you know, something big is going on here, and he kind of leads onto the actual conspiracy he's clever and as an actual kind of cop and i like the scenes at the start of the opening you know he's you know when's the good man decide when to kill and of course the ending of the movie i quite like his character and i like the uh, the actual dialogue back and forth between uh, agent 47 and his, his character from this movie robert cabot if i said it correctly uh he's in the prison break series uh, he's in various other movies and little cameos here and there kind of thing um he's actually 
quite a big role in this movie. He's, he plays the Russian uh, secret, you know, just secret police in a sense, the actual, and uh, he's kind of a baddie in a, in a certain way. He's a really good actor, and he does a really good Russian accent also in this movie. I suppose I like seeing him in movie movies. He's a really good actor, and I liked him in his performance in uh, Prison Break, and I think he's just another great actor to, you know, join this kind of, uh, you know, team and crew who are in this Hitman movie. So another great fantastic performance by Robert Kaplan. The main actor in this movie is uh, the woman from Quantum of Solace. I cannot pronounce her name. I'm not even going to try because I just fell massively. Pictures up here somewhere. Uh, yeah, she is kind of one of the second main characters in this movie. Of course, being that she is kind of opposite side, you know, Agent 47. She's the person that's been carried around and he has to kind of, you know, save her and protect her in a sense. And her performance is actually probably one of her best ones. This is before she did Quantum of Solace James Bond movie. And I think she's actually really, really good in this movie. And um, I really liked her performance. I really liked her dialogue. She was a typical kind of Russian kind of snobby mouth in a sense. She was a bit, you know, up, up in her own face kind of thing. But, you know, she, there was a drama. There was a kind of a, um, a sadness to her character, which I really appreciate. It was like when Agent 47 was basically just interrogating her and basically said, I have no use for you and I'm about to shoot him. Yeah, about, about to shoot her and uh, she just goes go ahead do it kind of thing and you just like he, he can't do it for some reason because he connects with her somehow and they kind of got the both um, similar kind of uh, characteristics in a sense damaged goods performance was really well done uh, also in this movie and I really like the ending and what happened to her character um, they explore a bit more than the lead scenes and the actual extras and stuff who her character was a bit more and I think the, the, the actual extended version shows a bit more a bit more detail how much she actually went through as an actual character and I think she was a pretty good actress I think this was one of her best performances uh, compared to Quantum of Solace and she was in a brief cameo with Max Payne uh, this is probably her best performance I haven't seen anything else from her since so this is probably the best one you can see from her <laughs> I'm going to give Hitman a hit or a miss. Now I do have the DVD also, this is the Hitman Extreme Edition uh, DVD, uh, there's only one version of this, this is the same version you get on DVD and Blu-ray, uh, this is a really great set, I picked this up for £5 a long, long time ago, and basically this is a 15 certificate, this is the uh, harder um, you know, action version, the extended version of Hitman, the first one, uh, this is a 12 certificate of the cinemas, this is the basically the more bloodier version, this is the more violent version, the best version you're going to get. Uh, unless you do a final version and pull the lead scenes back in. But uh, this version is definitely much, much better. I liked the extra scenes they put in. I liked the uh, violence because I just... If you, when you watch the trailer, you know there's certain scenes they took out. And uh, the fact that it is more, a bit more violent and a bit more character development between, you know, the relationship between Agent 47 and this kind of this sort of female character also. I uh, like the action scenes a bit more longer also. The dialogue's more longer. And it's just a better movie all around, to be perfectly honest. I, I would definitely recommend these, uh, the extremer version of Hitman, of course. Uh, there's some really fantastic extras also, including a feature audio commentary, which is actually pretty decent. Uh, there is gag reels, which is re actually really, really funny. It's like a finger five minute gag reels, and they're just take, they were laughing and taking a piss on set. It was hilarious. And there's a point where there's a, base, a person's birthday, and they just do a scene, and they just pull like a lot of balloons and stuff. And it's just really, it's really, really funny to be perfectly honest. Uh, deleted scenes are probably one of the best points of this uh, actual DVD, and you can get the same on Blu-ray. A lot of, lot of great, great, great scenes that were originally um, the director's choice scenes, but of course were taken out by 23 Fox because of the beating decks kind of thing. So check out the end of the scenes, and there's also a alternative ending, which is actually quite dark, to be honest. There's also a really fantastic extra, which talks about the actual game legacy and how that links to the actual games, to the actual movie format, and talks about interviews with actual uh, creators of the actual Hitman franchise, and uh, talks about the actual writers and certain directors and certain people working on this project, and talks about how it kind of links on to the legacy of basically Hitman. Really fantastic extra, definitely worth uh, picking up for a very low price. This has been out for a very long time, you can pick this up for a pound. Uh, anywhere. I definitely recommend the Blu-ray also. I've seen the Blu-ray quality, it's actually pretty decent. So yeah, Hitman extended version DVD. It's definitely worth picking up. Hitman review. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, have you seen the Hitman movie? Um, are you looking forward to the actual Hitman Absolution next week? I know I am. Uh, have you played the Hitman actual franchise games? What do you think? What would you like to see a sequel to Hitman uh, 2? There is a Hitman 2 on the works. What would you like to see as an actual sequel storyline? Love to know. Comment down below. Love to discuss based upon it. So in the meantime, it's Andrew from TV. Sound